Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to fill blanks in to create a proper data table. Sometimes you may get a table like this where there are blanks. So it's kind of implicit that the next row sh in this particular table, the next row here should be item 1. These blanks should all be item 1. And this region should be east here. These blanks should be east. Then we have north, south, west. But this particular blank row should be west and it's item one. And sometimes we get these type of tables from other folks and it's kind of something that maybe they pulled it off of a pivot table that didn't fill in the blanks, but we wanted to fill in the blanks ourselves so we can do some further analysis and do maybe a pivot table out of it. So I'll show you how to do this and I'll show you two ways that we can do this. One is if we had a simple table like this and it's actually a pretty easy way to create and fill the blanks in with the appropriate values. And the other is if we had a situation where someone gave us multiple tables. Here we may have multiple tabs of different pieces of data. So you can see all the quantities are different here. And this, this could reside in one Excel file or this could be in separate Excel files. Maybe you have like 10 or 20 of them. Then you don't want to go through and open each one to create um, to fill in the blanks with the appropriate values. So I'll show you how to do that with Power Query. So there's two ways I'll show you how to do that. So let's go with the first way. And it's actually pretty simple. And we're going to select the, the first cell here and go into Find and Select and select uh, Go to Special. Go to Special is going to bring out a Go to Special dialog box or Windows. And we just want to select the boxes. So it's going to select everything that is a blank. So it's going to select all the value, all the cells here that are blanks. When I click OK, you see that it did that since we clicked on our first cell. What we want to do is we want to copy the cell from above. So this is actually looking at this cell. We want to make this cell above that cell. We want to take this cell and copy the value that's above that cell. And it, all, it goes all the way down until you get to the next item, which blank, and it's going to copy the cell above here. So if we did that, what we need to do is just type in equal. And since the active cell is this cell, I can just click here and press control enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to replicate this formula or execute this formula on the rest of the blank cells. Press control enter. And now you see that it's done that. So basically it's taking east, it's taking this east and copy that from there. It's taking this item one, copy that from there. And the same thing here. It's taken, uh, let's see, which was another blank, this west, and copied it over here. Now, a thing to do is, if this is all the values in the table that we want and need it, we want to make sure that those formulas disappear, and we just have the values itself. So you see here that we have our formula here, and what we need to do is just copy and paste the values. So I'm going to select everything. So I can select the whole table here, the whole range of data. I'll just press Control a to select everything, and then Control c to copy. And then I'll just paste values. So I'll select paste, and I'll just paste values here. And once I do that, the formulas are gone, and it just pasted the output or the execution of those values, right? So there was the first example. So I'm going to go into the second example now, where we're going to use Power Query. And as I mentioned before, there may be some instances where you have multiple tabs. Let's say in this particular example, we have PQ1, PQ2, and PQ3 where we have multiple tabs of the same format where we have all these blanks. Now, these, this is not that much, but let's say you had 10 tabs, 20 tabs, 30 tabs, or these were 10, 20 different files, each with one tab that had all, the, all these blanks. And we can use the go to selecting the blanks and copying, pasting, but that would be, take a lot of work. Now, with Power Query, you can actually make that a little bit more easier to do. So how do we do that? What we need to do is bring up Power Query. And in Excel 2016, Power Query is part of the application. If we had previous versions of Excel, you'd have to download the add-in and enable it. But since this is 2016, this is already there. And what we're going to do is we want to query, query these three tabs and put it into its separate query. What I need to do is go to New Query and select from File and select from Fort Workbook. This workbook is called Fill Blanks Up, so I'm going to select that workbook. When I click on that, it's going to bring up the Windows Explorer. So when I bring up Windows Explorer, it's I have to browse for that file. And you can see I, I've already browsed for that file, and it's called Fill Blanks. So I'll select that, click Import, and it's going to import that file in. 
and it's going to bring up the query editor and it's going to ask or the navigator and it's going to ask which files which file or which tabs you want to put in for our query i'll select multiple items because i just want those three tabs pq1 pq2 and pq3 and i'm going to select load two with these ellipses because i want to define this as a connection only i don't want to load it and then later on bring it into a separate worksheets here so i'm going to click load two and select connection only you notice that that's already there here it says only create connection so it won't load it into a worksheet later on as these three separate tabs and i don't need to add it to the data model uh, that's another topic that's not part of this particular video but this basically enables you to use um, a little bit more advanced analytical features like power pivot but i'll just click load and it's going to bring up the query editor. So once that's happened, you can see that my workbook query show up here. Now, what I need to do is I need to append all these different queries together. So I need to add, put all these particular queries, these tables together into um, one sheet. I can do that with a new query. Go into new query and combine query and append. So what I want to do is now we're appending the three queries. So I'll select three or more tables select PQ1, press the shift key, and select PQ3, so it multi-selects, click add, and click OK. And it's going to go to the query editor where I can do some further manipulation. So you can see here we have our null values, these are basically those blanks, and what I want to do is in these null values, I want to indicate that it's going to take or copy the value from above. So this null is going to take item 1, this null is going to take east, that null is going to take west. The columns that have those nulls are going to be these first two columns. So I'll select that, press the shift key and select that to multi-select. And under transform, click on fill and fill down. So it's going to fill down those values. You can see those values that fill down. So go back to home, click close and load, and it's going to load it on as a new worksheet. You can see here now it's picked it up. Let's see for my first worksheet, we had a 651 for item one east quarter one let's see if that picked it up so that picked up six five one and so the second worksheet we had three 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 which is probably down here somewhere item one three 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 right and for the third worksheet we had item one nine two four which is probably down here for the next iteration of item one down there let's see item one down here nine two four so it's picked that up and it's also not uh, duplicated these headers. So that's the second way that we can uh, fill in the blanks for something that we would get uh, if we got a bunch of files like this. Now, as I mentioned before, if you only had two or three files, it's easy enough to go with the first example. But if we had 10, 20 files or 10, 20 tabs that had this, using Power Query to create this type of proper table is probably preferred. It'll save you a lot of time. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.